All right, welcome back. Let's finish homework 6.4. So we're going to move on to the second page. And we're going to start with writing a standard form polynomial that has roots at 1 and square root of 5. All right, so if x equals 1 is a root, then x minus 1 will be a factor of the polynomial. So it would be like y equals some number, some leading coefficient, times x minus 1. And if x equals square root of 5 is a root, then x minus the square root of 5 is a factor. And we also know that if uh, x equals square root of 5 is going to be a root of the polynomial, then x equals negative square root of 5 will also be a root of the polynomial. Okay. Really what we probably should have said is standard form polynomial with rational coefficients, right? Because this is going to be a polynomial that has these roots. It just won't have rational coefficients. But But if negative square root of 5 is also a root, then um, that's going to be, what am I saying here? That, that's also going to be a factor. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to multiply these all together, but I'm going to multiply these together first. And okay, this will be x squared minus root 5x plus root 5x. Okay, those will add away. And then minus square root of 5 times positive square root of 5, that'll just be minus 5. And, you know, it just said any old standard form polynomial. So I'm just going to let a equal 1. Okay, so let's say, okay, then I'm going to multiply x times x squared. That'll be x to the third. Inside would be negative x squared. Outside is negative 5x. And the last two, I multiply those together, and I get plus 5. So that's a standard form polynomial. It's got the roots that we need, and it's got rational coefficients. Okay. Maybe this one I'll edit the problem. So this time we're looking for a standard form polynomial with rational coefficients that has a triple root at x equals 0 and a single root at 1 minus square root of 2. There's nothing to say that it couldn't be a double root, but we don't want, we don't want that, right? Um, that will not be of minimal degree, and it'll just involve more work, right? So let's just say, okay, triple root at x equals 0. So y is going to be some number, some leading coefficient. But you said it needs standard form polynomial, so I'm going to again let a equal 1. a times x minus 0. That's going to be to the third power because it's a triple root. And x minus 1 minus the square root of 2. Okay. And then if 1 minus the square root of 2 is a root, and I'm going for something with rational coefficients, then 1 plus the square root of 2 needs to also be a root. OK. Now, I'm going to do this multiplication all um, And then I'll multiply that x to the third and across this. Okay. So if I distribute this negative, I'll have x minus 1 plus the square root of 2. multiplied by x minus 1 minus the square root of 2. So that's x squared minus x plus square root of 2x, negative x, and then negative square root of 2x. So already I'm seeing those are canceling. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 square root of 2 positive 1 square root of 2. So those are also going to cancel. And the last thing to multiply together, positive root 2 times negative root 2, that's going to be negative 2. So I've got x squared minus 2x minus 1. Yeah. So minus 2x minus 1. Still got this a times x to the third times that. We're going to be considering the case where a is one. You could let a be anything you wanted. It would still be a standard form polynomial. It would still have rational coefficients and it would still have the given roots. It doesn't really matter, but I just think the simplest answer is going to be to choose a equals one. So I'm going to just distribute the x to the third onto the x squared, the negative two x to the negative one. 
wait, that's going to be x to the fourth. And then minus x to the third. Right. We've got a picture of the graph of g of x, and we want to find the roots of g. Okay, so it looks like x equals 1 is going to be a root of this polynomial, and so we've got to find these other two. Okay, so what we're going to do is, okay, 1 could be the root. It divides 9. Um, let's see, 1 to the third minus 10 would be negative 9 plus 9 is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to set up for synthetic division. 1x to the third, 0x squared, and we've got to put in that 0 to account for the fact that there's no x squared term there negative 10x and positive 9. And we're going to divide that by x minus 1 to see what we're left with to hopefully find the other two roots. Hold on, what just happened here? Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Okay, there we go. So I know now that g of x can be factored with x minus 1. And what I'll be left with right here is x squared plus x minus 9. Okay. Okay, we've got one of the roots. Here we can find the other two. Okay, if we can think of two numbers that multiply to negative 9 and add to 1, then we can factor this, but I don't think that's going to be happening for us yet. It's going to be you know, 3 and 3 or 9 and 1, and neither of those things are going to add up to 9. So we're going to use the quadratic formula on this piece. So this is x equals 1. This will be x equaling negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c will be plus 3. 36 all over 2a. Okay. So in total, like all of our roots are going to be x equals 1, x equals negative the square root of 37 all divided by 2, and x equals negative 1 minus the square root of 37 all divided by 2. back to these rational root theorem questions. Okay, so here's a new function g of x. What's the degree of g? It's the highest power of x. I see that's 3. The leading coefficient is the number that's attached to the highest power, so it's going to be 2 here. Okay, all the possible rational roots of p. All right, so it's going to be yeah, we usually use lowercase p over lowercase q, and that's okay, this is supposed to be a g anyway, so, okay, yeah, it'll be fine. So, I'll go over here. Let's see, it's going to be x equals p divided by q, where my options for p and my options are q, or, you know, something I can kind of write out. So, options for p are factors of negative 1, so it's going to be plus or minus 1. Q could be anything that divides 2, the leading coefficient. So it's going to be plus or minus 2 or plus or minus 1. So in total, all of the possible rational roots would be plus or minus 1 divided by 1 or plus or minus 1 divided by 2. So I would say 1, negative 1, 1 half, and negative 1 half. All right, now we're going to find all the roots of g and give the multiplicities. Okay, so let's think about this. Uh, let's try the trick for x equals 1. Is 2 plus 3 minus 1 equal to 0? No. Okay, that's, so x equals 1 is not going to work. Let's try x equals negative 1. I'm saying, yeah, it's going to work. x equals negative 1 will work, provided that we set up for synthetic division correctly again. So I'm glad that there was 2 on this homework where we had to you know, put in that, that missing 0, because I don't remember doing that recently. So 2x to the 3, 3x to the 2, 0x to the 1st, and negative 1. And then we're going to run x equals negative 1 through synthetic. This 2 is 1. All right. And so now I'm going to say that 
g of x equals x minus negative 1 Oops. multiplied by 2x squared plus 1x minus 1. Okay. And now I'm thinking, OK, we, we could use the quadratic formula on this, but I think this one's factorable, right? Because we could find two numbers that multiply to negative 2 while adding to, to positive 1. That would be positive 2 and negative 1. And then I can just kind of keep factoring. Okay. And well, uh, I'll tell you if um, it is uh, it is oftentimes a good strategy. I'm seeing that x plus one is going to be a repeated factor. If you see one that works, you can keep running it until it doesn't work anymore. Um, but for me, I just I'm kind of thinking I'm going to use synthetic division to get it down to a degree two that I can use the quadratic formula on. And once I get it down to degree two, I don't need to keep using synthetic division. So I'm going to factor out this x plus one, leaving me with another copy of x plus one, and also a two x and a minus one. So as far as writing out the zeros, okay, this would equal zero at any time x equals negative one. Well, that factor is appearing twice, so it's going to be a double root. Okay, so that's a double root. And then 2x minus one, that could equal zero if x was positive one half. And that's just going to be a single root. Okay, when we say x equals one half, that was a possible rational root, so I guess that's a good sign. Right. And if we've got a third degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient, we'll be able to sketch that pretty easily. And with zeros at x equals negative one, and x equals one half. All right, third degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient is going to look like that, like the graph of y equals regular x cubed. So it's coming from below. x equals negative 1 is a double root, so it's going to bounce there. And then it's going to pass through with confidence at x equals 1 half. I could draw in a y-axis if we needed. I'm not sure that we do, but... And then, yeah, let's see that We've got a negative y-intercept, and from the equation, we would expect to see a negative y-intercept. So that's a good sign. All right, does g have a maximum or a minimum at x equals negative 1? That's going to be a maximum, right? Because we see that right here at x equals negative 1. Uh, the graph of g is going from increasing to decreasing. find the value of k that makes the given x value a root of the polynomial. Okay, so that might be a slicker way to do this, but what I'm just going to set up for synthetic substitution and make sure that the result comes back 0. Okay, because I set up for synthetic 1x to the 3, 3x to the 2, negative 1x plus some number k, and I need x equals 2 to be a root, I should be able to run 2 through synthetic substitution and then get zero back there. All right. So I'm going to drop this down. One, two, five, ten, nine, eighteen. K plus eighteen needs to equal zero. That means K is negative eighteen. Right. So now with this next one, K is the leading coefficient. Okay, well, still do that. It's not going to be any different. We're just going to have to keep track of more, I think. I'm not really sure how this is going to go. Um, so if it's like k negative 2 positive 1 negative 6. And I'm running x equals negative 3 through here. I need to get 0 back. So k negative 3k Negative 
degree K plus two. I mean, I'm just going to incur. Oh no, I'm not going to get. I thought it was going to end up with a third degree polynomial in K, and it's like okay, we never no, be no better off. But it's not because we just keep multiplying by a number, so it's going to be all right. Just got to say negative two minus three K. It's going to have to be a little more. I can do that. Negative three times this is going to be positive six plus nine K. So that would be 7 plus 9k. You can make sure I'm doing this right. Actually, I'm just going to keep going and check my answer at the end. All right, so if I'm taking 7 plus 9k and multiplying that by negative 3, I should get negative 21 minus 27k. That, that seems promising, because if I add these things together, I'll get negative 27 minus 27k equals 0, and that would be k equaling negative 1. All right, that's what I've gotten for when I worked this problem. So, last package. All right, it is known that f of 2 is equal to 0. That's nice, okay, so we won't have to, you know, go through any sort of, like, major bad stuff. Hopefully this works out nice. We'll, we'll figure it out. So explain why x equals a half cannot be a root of f. Rational root theorem. Okay, so while 1 is a factor of negative 4, 2 does not divide 1. Okay. So I would say the leading coefficient of f is 1. And, you know, the problem with x equals 1 half is that 2 does not, is not a factor of 1. going to factor f completely, probably using the fact that f of 2 equals 0. And I'm hoping that we're going to use that one that we see, and then what we're left with will be factored. That's what I'm hoping. Hopefully we don't have to use the rational root theorem on the quotient. So I'm going to take 1x to the 4, negative 4x to the 3, positive 3x to the 2, positive 4x, and negative 4. I'm going to divide that by x equals 2, or x minus 2, I guess. Hold on, what just happened here? Negative 1 times 2 would be negative 2. This will be positive 2, 4, 0. Yeah. All right, yes, and this is going to be something I can use group and factor on. So I've got f equaling x minus 2 from that one multiplied by this is going to be x to the 3 minus 2x to the 2 minus x plus 2 okay. then I'm going to keep factoring okay had this not been factorable I would have tried to run x equals 2 through synthetic division again and seen if it was a double root because I do think it's going to be and that would have knocked it down to a to a quadratic which is something I could either factor or use the quadratic formula on okay so I'm going to say this is equal to x minus 2 from that factor and then over here I'm going to do group and factor so it'll be x squared times x minus 2 minus 1 times x minus 2 Okay, so then I factor that x minus 2, x squared minus 1, and I might as well just go the rest of the way, you know, combine those two, and then factor this thing. Oh, and that's what I said, factor, not necessarily if I find the zeros, okay, but I am going to write the zeros in order to give my sketch. f is a fourth degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient. And the zeros are x equals 2, which is a double root. 
x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. And both of those are single roots. Okay, so if I've got a fourth degree polynomial, an even degree with a positive leading coefficient, that's going to look like you know the graph of y equals x squared, at least in the end behavior. Well, the graph's going to come from above. x equals negative 1 and 1 are both single roots. The graph's going to pass through here. Then at x equals 2, I'm seeing a double root, so the graph's going to bounce. And then we've got ourselves a sketch. That one was pretty nice. I like the look of that one. So I'm going to go in, and then, you know, if I've got to put in a y-axis, I'm going to say it's okay. It's probably going to be halfway between negative 1 and 1. Now, I don't know that it's going to be at the location of the relative minimum, that's probably that sounds too good to be true. Uh, but it does make sense that x equals negative, or y equals negative 4 is going to be the y-intercept here, because no matter what, I'm going to see something negative. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to uh, leave that down there. Well, didn't ask for a y-axis, so I'm not going to draw one. Okay, now is f increasing or decreasing at x equals 1? Oh, right here, it's increasing. F increasing or decreasing at x equals negative 1, it's decreasing. Okay, it's going from positive to negative. As I move left to right, the graph is going down. Okay. And if they ask about is there a local maximum or a local minimum or neither at x equals 2, well, I'm just going to look right there at x equals 2 and say, hey, what are we seeing here? We're seeing it's like at the bottom of its curve. So we're going to say that's a local minimum. And then the last few is, yeah, here's a polynomial. It's a fifth degree polynomial. And we're going to answer some increasing, decreasing, max, min questions about it. So it's very much like the last one, except it's already factored for us. And we're going to have to produce a sketch, even though it doesn't tell us. Because otherwise, we won't be able to know these things. So I'm going to be having a third, fourth, fifth degree polynomial, right? Because this is three powers of x here, a fourth power, and a fifth power. This thing here doesn't contribute to the degree because there's no x on it. Okay, it will contribute to the, ne to the leading coefficient, which is going to be negative 2. Okay, because if I multiplied this stuff all out, which I'm not going to, and then multiplied it in the negative 2, I'd end up with negative 2x to the fifth, and then a bunch of other stuff. So I know that this is a degree 5 polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. So if we've got an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient, the graph's going to look in the end behavior, like the graph of y equals negative x cubed. I think I'm going to list out the zeros next. So x equals negative 3. That's a triple root. Okay. Uh, x equals positive 4. That's going to be a single root. And x equals 5 is also going to be a single root. Okay. And so, I'm going to make my sketch, but. Okay, this is where I'm saying really just space out as if they are evenly spaced, even if these are separated by 1 and these are separated by 7, right? Okay, so I'm going to start with the end behavior x equals negative 3 is a triple root, so the graph is going to hesitate as it passes through, but it is going to pass through. Okay, and then these other two are single roots, so it's going to go up and then down, passing through those zeros with confidence, right, because they're single roots. Okay, and that's going to be a sketch, and that will be good enough for us to, to say, to answer these questions. Okay, is g increasing or decreasing at x equals 4? Increasing. And then is g increasing or decreasing at x equals 5? Right there. g is going from positive to negative, so that means it's decreasing. Okay. And then is there a relative maximum, relative minimum, or neither at x equals 3? I'm going to say neither here because, okay, really I'd say that x is decreasing, or f is decreasing, g is decreasing at x equals negative 3. Um,
positive before x equals negative 3. The function is positive after x equals negative 3. The function is negative. So it's like in the midst of decreasing. It's not at a minimum or at a maximum. So I'll just say neither. Okay, because really specifically x equals negative 3 is a triple root, not a double root. A okay, triple root, something like that. All right. That's going to be all for this homework. Hope it helps.